Hello and welcome to my Surge Graph review. And I have a feeling that you're really gonna like this SEO tool. What I'm gonna be doing is going over some of the most popular features, mainly two of them in this video. Then I'll be just showcasing how it works and then talking a little bit more about it. If you would like to test them out, I will leave my affiliate link down in the description where you can click on that and get all of the great details. And depending on when you're watching this, they might have a really good deal on this. I'm not gonna say what specifically because when it ends, I don't wanna confuse anyone. So if you are looking to say, create and optimize content and even do some keyword research, this is probably going to be something you'd want to look into as an SEO. Consider it kind of like a surfer SEO alternative. And in fact, there are a lot of great things that it does probably even better than surfer SEO and a few things that might need a few tweaks. Getting started right off the bat, they're going to have their content writer, which is the long form AI and keyword research. Those are the two main things I'm going to dive into here, starting with keyword research, because a lot of times you want to find your keywords first before you start writing anything, or at least let surge graph do all the heavy lifting. Let's click on keyword research. And here, all we need to do is simply insert a seed keyword. So I do have a website in the uh, hobbies niche, I guess you could say, which is, uh, you know, pretty bland and broad, but I'm going to think of something kind of quickly that can be related to that. So give me one second. I'm going to type in the keyword and then we'll click on the research keyword button. I right, just the hobbies for just for it to be a little bit more broad. I probably could just do hobbies, but I kept it at that. Let's click on research keyword. All right, so here we go. Here's going to be an example of what it looks like after the keyword research comes up. If you look on the left, we have like the total amount of keywords being 61, total volume, whether it's going to be informational, uh, transactional, or local, the average difficulty, and you can see like the trend, whether it's increasing, decreasing, or kind of just staying the same, kind of like something like this, right? We have the volume, obviously the current search volume of the keyword, the keyword difficulty. So for a particular keyword, ones in the green are going to be great, right? So very low difficulty. Also the opportunity score. So if this is like, you know, should you go for it? Should you not? All in all, as it says towards the middle or the bottom of the top paragraph, it tells you which keywords you should get the most traffic with the least amount of effort, which is always a good thing. So kind of going through here, uh, if we scroll down ever so slightly, the bar is going to be on the right, which is kind of hard to see in case you want to actually drag it that way. But what we can do here is like if we see something that we like, we can go and we can actually go with that specific keyword and then, you know, create a article based upon it. So I don't know if there's anything. How about hobbies for geeks? That seems like a good one, right? Low difficulty. So what we can actually do is like if we highlight it or we can, we don't have to do that if we want, but we can copy it. We can search for this one specifically, like this keyword. I'm going to actually do that. So give me a second. I'm going to click on this and it's going to do a new uh, search in case there's like other related keywords maybe we want to do instead. All right, so here we have hobbies for geeks. And as you can see, it's not going to have like super similar ones, but kind of different, like nerdy hobbies. Hobbies? Did I say hobbies? I think I did. I was looking at this and this, and I combined those. Wow. Nerdy hobbies and list of geeky things. That was pretty funny. So some of these are going to be like not as close, but like nerdy things to do at home. Uh, what do geeks not like? Now we're getting into like computer programming and so on and so forth. But nevertheless, let's say we wanted to stick with hobbies for geeks. What we can do is actually click on this and it's going to open up the AI writer where we can actually create an article based upon this, which is actually pretty cool. So let's do that right now. And as you can see, it's going to load right there, analyzing competitors' content. Let's give it a second. When it's done, we can load it up, and I will show you how that works. Okay, so there we are. We have our keywords. It says Hobbies for Geeks, and it's untitled. So let's click on this. And starting off with the outline. So if you look at the right side here with the long form AI, it says these topics are generated to maximize the topic coverage of your content. Removing or editing them may affect your topic coverage score. So let's see what it has right here. Um, introduction to geeky hobbies, exploring, exploring the world of nerdy do it yourself, uh, 24 DIY hobbies for small spaces. Uh, the best nerdy hobbies, embrace your inner geek, a journey through popular hobbies and geekdom, unleash your creativity. Uh, and so on and so forth. So I'm kind of looking at these and seeing like, are any of these very similar? Okay. Like, so for example, I don't know if maybe we want to have 24 of them right there, but the thing is if, if we have that there and we don't like it, we can always delete it. Right. So kind of scrolling through, if we do want to add topics, we can do that, of course. So a topic would be right here and we can just simply write something in, right? If we don't want it, we can delete it. Uh, if you want to add more topics right here, there's going to be some that are just kind of added in there. But nevertheless, what I want to do is pretty much just create this article with as little quote unquote work as possible, just to kind of show you how Surge Graph works in terms of their AI, because obviously you can put a ton of work into it, but it's cool if you can do a little bit less and still get a pretty decent result, right? Especially if you're planning on really pumping out content. So I will keep this just to kind of show you how it comes out, even though some of these might want to change a little bit, but nevertheless, let's click on continue. 
So we have our target content length. So this is something that I feel could maybe be a little bit better. So it says 2,500 to 3,500 words, which is suggested. I'm not sure if that's pulling from the top 10. I hope it is. I don't know. Like, I don't know, obviously, everything about software that I get to review, but in my hopes, usually that is going to be the best way to do it. There's going to be a lot of comparisons in my mind when I'm using this to say Surfer SEO, because it's a very similar. And when using that, you can literally go in and say, out of all the websites that are ranking for this specific keywords, which ones do I want to utilize? Okay. Some are going to be such huge authority websites that you don't want to say, put them in your batch to analyze because they're going to rank regardless of if they just put a few paragraphs or, you know, a thousand or 2000, or if they have no backlinks. So I'm not sure if that's going into the equation, but I hope it is because it would help. Right. So I will go with this just so we can get a little bit more words. If you want to go longer, you can do that as well. So let us know what you want long form AI to add to your outline. We have a talking point. We have questions and contextual terms. I feel that's going to be good, right? So let's just generate and go from there. So let's give it a sec. It says uh, estimating waiting time is going to be 60 seconds. All right. So here's going to be the outline right here. So introduction to geeky hobbies, exploring the world of nerdy, do it yourself. Some of the contextual terms. So then we have geek approved 24 do it yourself hobbies. I don't know if they're going to have all 24 there, which is I'm kind of curious about that one. I don't think I've had 24 in like an actual H2 probably need a few more. But like I said, uh, I'm going to do more of like letting surge graph do the work on this one. And then we can always edit it from there. But this is pretty much going to be some more of the headlines talking about the things they're going to be mentioning here. Uh, Everything looks good from my standing. Now we pretty much have the quote unquote start writing where the AI is going to do it. So there are different tones for this. We have formal, persuasive, humorous. They say persuasive, <laughs> humorous. I'm really messing up tonight. Uh, authoritative, empathetic, inspirational, and informational. But conversational seems fine. We can go with the creativity left or right. I'm going to keep it on normal and the readability seventh to eighth grade seems fine. Uh, the bigger the words you use, the more the audience you're going to lose. Well, that kind of rhymes, but you can write that down if needed. Let's get with start writing and we'll see what we get. All right. So let's give it some time and I will be back when it's done. All right, and so just like that, we have a nice little article and it's already in 80 for well optimized, which is good because it's funny. I've done quite a few articles just to like test it. And usually it'll start off like in the yellow, which is like 50 or 60 or so, but it's nice that it's well optimized as it is. So I will read a little bit of this. Uh, let me just scroll down and let's see, did they actually do 24? I don't think they're are so that's something that could be changed that's a very easy change so look there's coding one two three uh four five six seven eight nine ten so that's like one thing that can be changed right so 10 diy hobbies i think it was one more right there okay so no big deal there also there is the ability i don't know if you saw it or not but if you highlight a specific amount of text there's rewrite there's simplify there's expand there's write with terms there's write for me and expert command so there's quite a few things you can do with like the content that you have there but nevertheless let's just get into the intro did you know that embracing your inner geek can lead to exciting new interests? geeky hobbies aren't just for tech enthusiasts or comic book aficionados anymore they offer a world of nerdy do-it-yourself projects and cool hobbies that are both fun and fulfilling whether you're into electronics thrifting, Lego, or exploring niche topics, there's something out there for every geek to dive into. Geeky hob hobbies have gained popularity in recent years as more people realize the joy of tinkering with gadgets, creating unique crafts, or delving into the world of coding. From building your own metal detector at home to mastering Linux commands, these hobbies not only provide an outlet for creativity, but also challenging your problem-solving skills. So if you're looking for a way to make your free time more interesting and engaging, why not explore the vast array of geeky hobby sites and communities? So overall, that's pretty good. I don't know about you, but that red well didn't sound like a robot. Maybe I sounded like a robot, but that's me talking or speaking, right? So I will scroll through ever so slightly just so you can kind of get an idea. There are a good amount of words here. There's 3,500 and it didn't take all too long for it to create. Now, there are going to be some things that you might want to like change around because if you talk about something once and you talk about it again, you might not want to do that. But this looks great from a structure standpoint, from the topics. We saw like creating your dress up cosplay. Uh, there's a lot of things going on there in terms of just like geeky related things. And we can scroll back up using this right here. So that looks pretty good just kind of scrolling through. So we're 80% or 80 with well optimized. We can go over to the topic. So these are the topics that we can add if we wanted to add more. So it gives you quite a few, which is good. There's 17. We have questions. Okay. So if we wanted to do that, we can add the plus. So there's a few there. 
We have links in case you want to add those where you can link it to something. Really going to be up to you. I don't know if you want to use any link juice, you know, sending it outwards or maybe don't want to send it to a competitor or Reddit, whatever it's going to be, right? Uh, contextual terms. So this, once again, this reminds me a lot of Surfer SEO. One thing I will say that it's actually done pretty well here is that there's many times where some of these are just really over-optimized. As you can see here, so... You're going to want, so for need is going to be anywhere from three to 14. And then how many you're using is going to be right there. So the ones in red are a little bit overboard. So for hobbies, you want to use that four to six times. Here it's 42. Will that make or break your article? Probably not. Maybe, you know, but 42 of a word could be a little bit too much. That seems like the only one that's in there a little bit more like this is 15 where eight could be the max. Not too bad, right? I wouldn't worry about that, but it seems like only this one is up a little bit more could probably change that around if needed. But overall, that is pretty good in my opinion. So far, this has been one of the best well-optimized articles just after writing it with AI. And here's the best part too when it comes to SEO. What we can do is actually auto-optimize a lot of these. So it says 12 improvements needed. So right now it's at 80%, where it says, great job, your content has good potential to rank for the target keyword. We can actually increase that just by letting AI once again auto-optimize this. So we can actually go in and change some of these things, or we can let the auto-optimize do it, which of course I'm going to do because that's the fun part, letting AI do a lot of the heavy work. So I'm going to click on this. And it's going to take some time. So keep in mind, I will come back when it's done and then we will talk about it. And remember, we're at 80% well optimized. Let's see how much it increases. All right. So that probably took maybe two minutes, maybe three or so. But as you'll see, we can actually go through and check off the ones that we do or don't want to do. So 19 cool hobbies for geeks, unleash your inner nerd. It says, uh, you know, optimizing title using the target keyword at the beginning of your title. So let's say we want to change that. Okay, so the next one's going to be adding the target keyword to the URL. So we can actually click on that. And I think it was like hobbies for geeks. Looks good. And now when we actually go through, what we can do is this is going to be so the contextual terms. This is like adding more of those terms that we were you know, showing before we didn't have enough. What you can actually do is look through and say, does this look good? So before it says they offer a world of geeky and interesting do-it-yourself projects and cool, amazing. So let's say we like that one. That looks good. It changes. Now, what you can actually do if you want to just accept all these, it'll go through and do it for you, which I'm just going to show you because AI rocks, right? So let's do that. And just like that, all the contextual aspects are done. Now, if we scroll down a little bit more, we have decorations. So best nerdy hobbies recommended by fellow geeks and nerds. So decorations is simply like bolding it or something. I'll show you right here. If we go back up see where was that one there we go so it just bolds it for you so uh maybe that's needed maybe it's not it's not a it's not a huge thing but you know we can always accept all just to do it and then we'll go from there so here we have links you know do we want to link out to this i'm just gonna like decline that decline that let's say we don't want to link out <laughs> okay we're gonna save all that link juice for something good and there was one more and just one more there and great. So we were at 80. Now we were at 89%, which is fantastic. Like I said, this is the highest I've gotten it just from using AI, which is pretty cool. So we can exit this view. Now we have this well-optimized article. So once again, a great uh, potential to rank. Uh, and I've used Surfer SEO a lot. And even when I was in there, there's I know there's a lot of people who are like, oh, I just got to get it perfect to 100. In my opinion, you're just wasting time because you're usually going back, trying to find some words here and there to add in. It can get very tedious. You know, if as long as it's green, I think you're going to be good. Just get it done, get it published, get it indexed, and then move on to the next one, right? So that is just a very quick example. Maybe not super quick, but what surge graph can do in terms of ai and writing which is always a really good thing it didn't take too long in my opinion it did a great job i did read the intro but i will scroll down and say like do one more so if you're a geek or nerd with living space, don't fret. There are plenty of fun geeky hobbies that can be enjoyed even in small spaces. There are plenty of exciting DIY hobbies that cater specifically to geeks and nerds. Whether you're looking for a fun and geeky hobby, there are plenty of options to choose from, from coding and puzzle solving. So that one probably could be a little bit more just because they repeated a little bit better. Excuse me. There are plenty. And then it says, um, you know, there are plenty of options to choose from. So that one was a little repetitive. Let's say I just wanted to rewrite this. Let's see what it would look like. How about rewrite? So geeks and nerds with living space need not worry. There are numerous they can explore for geeks and nerds, whether you're, there are plenty of options. So I think it was just more of like, they're going to continue that. So what I want to do is just, let's say, go, I would probably just delete this, right? I think that was the only thing that was wrong with it or could have been improved. So that's an example of rewriting if you need, but 
going through, you'd probably just do a similar thing. And what I like the most is that your the ability to create these quickly using AI is pretty good. Plus the ability to optimize it using AI is a really, really great part of this software. And with that being said, I'm kind of going to conclude this and talk about some of the surge graph pros and cons or the likes and dislikes, or at least what I think can be proved ever so slightly. So so as we are here talking about the content writer, I think this is pretty darn awesome. If you ask me, I did so much with so little. And the fact that it's also unlimited, which I think I forgot to mention, is a huge plus. So you don't have to worry about only being able to write like or utilize, say, five documents and you got to upgrade. You can do this as many times as you want with your paid plan, which is always a really good thing. So the ability to quickly and easily create content using AI and optimize it at the same time, chef's kiss for that. With that being said, you get a great price and value for this. And I'm saying that comparing it to Surfer SEO, which I know there's a lot of complaints about them being a little bit more pricey. So this is a great alternative to Surfer SEO, in my opinion, especially when it comes to the content writing and AI. So those are obviously my big likes. I can't talk about the AI enough. When it comes to like what could be improved a little, I definitely have to say the keyword research. You know, it's not bad. It's nothing that's super exciting. It's nowhere near as exciting as creating the AI content and optimizing it. I feel like there's room for growth or a little bit more improvement in that, especially when it comes to finding more seed keywords. Because when you put in a seed keyword for something really big, you're probably going to expect to get a lot more keywords. In fact, I'll go back and show you, give you an example. So the one thing I quickly want to show you here, I'm not going to even hop in, but you'll notice that I put in the keyword for Shopify just to get a seed keyword. And all it came up was was 345 keywords. Now, in my opinion, that's just not going to be enough. And the reason why I say that is because I probably the last time I entered keywords in Ahrefs for Shopify, I want to say I got around like 20,000 keywords, maybe more, unless I'm confusing it with a different uh, e-commerce behemoth. But uh, usually when I'm going into keyword research for SEO, I really want the most amount of keywords. I want everything absolutely related to Shopify. I don't care if it's, you know, super long tail. I just want to find everything because there's always a great way to find keywords where there's just not a lot of people going after them, like long tail keywords. And I feel like it just doesn't give you enough, especially when you should be getting so many more. So... So that's why I say like the keyword research is just like, okay, it's helpful, but there's so many ways to do it that I'm like not super excited about it compared to the content writer and the long form AI. Aside from that, I did talk about previously with the AI that sometimes it can be just too over optimized. There will be some keywords where they're used like 90 times out of say like 20. And I think that's a little bit too much. And sometimes that can happen with multiple keywords. So I think that could be improved ever so slightly, but, but I think something that's definitely feasible with, you know, tweaking in the future. And last but not least, when it comes to dislikes, it would be cool if they came with some type of trial or free trial, but they don't. But that's not as huge of a deal because they do have a money back guarantee. It's just something I like to see when it comes to reviewing software because it's always cool to test drive it. But but nevertheless, that's going to be my surge graph review. You know, I just got my hands on this not too long ago, and I'm very impressed when it comes to this. I think it has even more potential just from what I'm seeing with the content writer. I've already heard they're coming up with many new features that are coming very soon. So so there's a lot of potential and promise with the software, and it's definitely looking on the bright side for Surge Graph. I hope that you enjoyed my Surge Graph review, and I will leave my link down below should you want to test it out. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment down below. My name is James. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in my next video.